Hi and welcome to Wired Up with Mark. Today I'm going to talk about polyphony in Audulus. And first thing I'm going to do that I didn't do last time is to save my patch. So uh, I can save as I go along. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop into this module browser. And I'm going to uh, use both the split and combine modules. Let's see what they do in a second. So combine. Uh, okay. So. Uh, in Audulus, we have, in Audulus 4, we have this new system uh, of managing polyphonic signals. And it's based around this uh, pair of nodes here, the combine and split nodes. And what you can do is you can modify however many channels you want. If you want, say, 20 channels of polyphony, you have 20 different signals that can come into here, and then they get packed into one uh, signal together, right? So you can see that 20 appearing there. That means 20 different signals. They're, they're all zero, but nevertheless, they're still getting packed into that one um, meter there. You can, you can tell, see this one is right there in those, uh, you can see that at the beginning and at the end. And those are 20 different signals packed into there. Okay, so uh, basically this is combined in, it, this node is at the heart of this module and this node is at the heart of this module. Uh, and what this will do is just split those parts. It's the inverse, so it kind of, you pack the signals in with the combine module and then you uh, take them apart with the split module. And what this allows us to do is to, um, instead of having to, okay, you have eight voices in a patch, then you need to have eight separate different copies of the same synthesizer. Like you would if you if you were using uh, modular synths, you would, if you have one VCO and it's just a mono VCO, you'd have to have eight different copies of it um, in your system to uh, do polyphonic uh, things with it. Eight, you have to have eight different, um, eight different VCOs, eight different VCAs, eight different VCFs, eight different envelopes, um, unless they could all output their own uh, signal. But even then, what you'd have in a, in a module like that, uh, like I think there's some dope for uh, uh, polyphonic modules and so, so some other, there are, there's surely some other VCOs that are, that are polyphonic in your rack, but um, what you have is you have multiple um, pitch inputs and multiple outputs. And even though you might have one unified set of controls, all of those um, oscillators, there's actually eight copies of an oscillator inside of that module. In this same way, uh, you are kind of doing that in Audulus. So what I have here, I'm going to go to a VCO and just for simplicity's sake, we'll do this. And so you can just hear the way the I put the polyphony is working. And I will put a uh, knob here to differentiate these two notes. Right, so those are two different notes on top of each other, and I could expand this up to three. So we'll have one at the octave. Right. That's like a triad, and you can keep going. You add another voice. I'm just doing. Uh, Copy paste to create a new knob. There we go. So there's a you know four note chord going into one oscillator, and uh, you don't instead of having to have you know four knobs connected to each VCO uh, uh, that you that you would then combine with a mix knob. This this way it just creates that. Uh, polyphony within one module. Now you can see uh, this signal uh, that's coming from the P, the P output meaning poly, uh, going to the input here has four signals packed together. And I don't want to continue sending those signals out to this um, output. I want to con collapse it to a mono signal before I do that. So I would do um, poly mix and what this does is it just 
takes those signals and mixes them together. So now, like that. And then you can control the volume, the overall output volume of all of those. Um, so the, the other thing to consider too is and to think about, um, say I wanted to have another effect and I wanted like a reverb effect on uh, my uh, synthesizer. And for a second, I, I will just real quickly build up a little VCA thing here with um, an envelope so you can hear, I mean, you need to have some kind of contour to the sound to hear the, the reverb. So um, let's do AP. Uh, okay. okay, so I'm clocking this envelope, which is opening this VCA, and then I will send that to the output, right? So that chord, and I'm going to do a reverb. Um, nah, whatever, just this one. So, like this, like that in there. Okay, so you can hear now that you have a reverb on this chord, right? And what you, what is important about this is that the poly mix is coming before, excuse me, I just had my uh, morning coffee, uh, it's coming before the modules that you don't want to be also poly, right? So in this instance, we have all of the, um, even though we have a poly oscillator, we have them all controlled by the same VCA uh, and envelope opening and closing together and then all going through one reverb. If, for instance, I, uh, went through just like this and oh, whoops, just like this and skipped the poly mix. All of a sudden, you see the um, the CPU shoot up uh, really high because what it's doing is it's actually making a copy. It's making four copies um, of this reverb and uh, processing four different. Uh, um, reverbs for uh, one for every single voice, and that's a waste of CPU. You don't need to do that. Right, and actually it does some kind of weird things where it's, um, uh, it's it, well, actually now I think about it, it's only making two copies because it has two outputs and you have these um, left and right. So basically, for, for, for more predictable results, you want to, you want to um, collapse into a mono signal but, uh, when you don't explicitly need it to uh, process into um, poly. Right? Okay. So, but now, for instance, I, I say I want to um, do a round and go through those notes uh, one at a time. I can do that with a shift register. register. And with the clock, uh, what's it called? A divider. Mm -hmm. And just over here. And we'll have another combined module that'll come down here. Let's see in a second. And okay, so what I'm gonna do is have this signal here. This is the signal that's going to be sampled by the shift register. This is a cool module. Um, this uh, this is actually a neat thing, a trick that they used to do in back in the day to create a delay sound uh, by um, sending. Uh, pitch signals through a shift register and then you have different oscillator voices and one is sort of following the next in a round like the a round being like a, a kind of offset song that's sung by three or more people where you know, one person starts and then they go for a little bit and then the first person the second person starts at the beginning and then now they're overlapping on each other but staggered and in this way, you can create a delay using a shift register where it's kind of, every time this input is pulsed, it will send that uh, input right here to the next one. But I need to uh, do a different, I need to do this one, I think. Right, one, you wanna do, okay, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. So the number of voices that you have, that's the number um, that we'll shift by. So there's four, so it'll, it'll just do one, Every, you look through here, ignore the, the four top ones here. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, there's always one of them on at the same time, and there's only one of them on at the same time. So that's how we're going to 
uh, make sure that only one voice is sounding at a time, but because we can uh, increase the, the decay of the envelope, you'll hear them overlap on each other, right? Okay, so we have this, and then, uh, whoops, I'm going to, um, now we have to, we have, we're skipping the poly mix tile there, and we're actually gonna put it on this side of this module, uh, because we want this one to remain uh, in polyphonic mode, so. So here it's an arpeggio now. But it's an arpeggio, but they're overlapping on each other because the decay is is still decaying over those, right? And we can see, we'll bring in, for a second, I'm actually gonna pop in the, well, we'll see octave shift. I just wanna shift this down a little bit. It's because it's a little easier to listen to to me. Lower frequency sounds uh, for a little longer time. Okay. So, to show you what's going on here, I'm going to split apart this. And th this is a cool. Uh, th the way the split module works is it actually looks at how many signals are coming in, and the maximum you can split by is the number of signals that's coming in. Even though you, you can you can you can add more signals with the combine there. Uh, but with the split, you'll only be able to split apart however many signals are coming in. And then this way, the, the, this knob up here is sort of scaled to that. Uh, so if I had eight signals coming in like this, then you see that immediately reflected in the split module too, right? Okay. So, yeah, we can see um, the different centimeter waveform. Mm -hmm. And two. So these are the envelopes for each voice. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's this is the split module showing you how it's taking apart this poly signal and showing you again them one at a time. Um, but essentially you have four copies of this module, four copies of this module, and four copies of this module. Uh, and, and four copies of this module, actually. Um, and then all of that gets collapsed into mono in this one, so that you only have one copy of this module. Okay. So, in essence, that's, that's the core of what you need to understand about how to use poly uh, signals in Audulous. Um, but we can, obviously, you want to do something a little more interesting than have a chord here. Uh, and we can experiment for a second, just, just so we're not blazing through everything. Um, what's neat about this shift register module is that it's got this fade control. And what that does is that every um, time that it shifts from one output to the next, it will lower the amount of signal you see in there. So what I can actually do here is another cool, another cool thing that happens with the meters is that they'll automatically show you, see the, that's the gate going through and you can see it moving across, but it's really thin. So what I'm gonna do is, is uh, change the size of the meter so you can see, see it a little bit uh, better. So I'm gonna do like, uh, 100 for the width and 50 for the height. Right. So that's the gate as it's going through, but now I'm going to fade it a little bit so that every time it's shifting, it's going down a little bit. So the first one is the loudest. Sorry. I bet you can, you can tell how you can use this to create an echo. So um, let's just take these off. So right, this sounds now like an echo, but it's not really echoing in the sense that it's not going through an echo module or, or, or a delay module. It's using four different voices that are exactly the same and just reducing the volume of them one after another. And that's how they used to do it back in the day, uh, before they had uh, delay modules. Um, 
that were used in digital delays. Uh, or that you could have this, doing it this way, you could have a delay of a super long time uh, in between delays without being limited by the size of the bucket brigade chip or the size uh, and configuration of your tape echo. Um, so, okay, what I want to do next, show you a little bit more about how you can, let's say, we want to have these four synths together. And let me put a VCF in here just so that we can have a little variety of the sound. Where is this? Okay. The sound here and here. Okay, I'm going to use a attenuator to get this signal just where I want it. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm attenuating the amount of envelope that's coming in through here, uh, the maximum amount, right, it'll peak to about here, and then I'm adjusting the offset from that control. Let's take, let's get the big one, Just block, clock, clock, okay, and all right, we're going to use some sequencers, so sequencer, let's do the random sequencer, just this little small one, just to start with, and I'm going to uh, have four of them, and they'll all be clocked at different rates, so that you'll have a kind of four-note chord, but um, they will all be changing at a different at a different rate. So we have this one to go fast, um, and let's we'll change this so that they're all um, randomized every. 64 beats, let's say 16th notes, okay. Uh, this is, do this one, let's do this every two, right? And then every four and every eight. Okay, so we're combining these back in and these now are the sources of the notes that are gonna come through. is actually give them more range um, because they're all kind of scrunched together. Uh, I want them to be apart, the notes to be apart from each other a little bit. So do modulation to octave converter. So I'm using the tiles here to keep them a little conceptually simple. And actually, because I because I have this control now, I can skip this module and just do this and pull it down. That, that, that's the same as the octave shift. Let's get an LFO in. I've, I've had a shameful lack of LFOs on the patches that I've been showing you guys here. Okay. Ooh, here's a good option, right? So right now, I have one LFO going off all four voices at the same time. So they're sharing, they all will look the same, um, this have the same wave shape, right? You can hear that, that all of them are, 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 are responding to this control in the same exact way. Uh, but let's, we, we can combine four different LFOs and have them running at different speeds so that you'll hear each each one is different. So I'm 
right now there's that mono signal going in there, but this one is really for, if there's a mono signal going into a poly module, then it applies it equally to all four voices, but if we have a poly signal coming in, it will look at each one individually. So, you can hear the difference, right? skip this um, one again. So here, the sound is kind of locked in. Now here, every voice has its own shape. Okay. I'm going to...
just going to be on that one voice is going to have a delay. or things to modify all of the voices at once, you run them through uh, like this, or you split them apart and then pack them back together again. Let's see, I can put a wave folder on one too. That's a little better, right? Because everything's kind of packed in now. So again, just to recap the signal flow, we have the clock coming to the clock divider. The clock divider is uh, pulsing these random sequencers and randomizing their sequences once every 64 incoming clock pulses. and. Uh, it's also clocking them all at different rates from one another. And let's just, let's do the 
this a little bit. So one, two, three, four. We we'll get some different meters going in there. Um, is that right? Did I do that? Three and four. Okay. And these sequences, these individual sequences, are getting packed into one poly signal. This poly signal is getting sent to the mod to oct, um, the modulation to octave converter, and that is stretching it to a range and then offsetting it so it's this is the lowest note it can play and this is the total amount of range that it can cover. Then it's getting sent to a quantizer. Let's go to some different scale here now. And that's snapping these random values into um, notes that are actually in a scale. Sent to the VCO and so this again after the combined module, all of these are now four copies of every single one, one for each voice. So you have the VCO, and then this is this VCO is again getting split apart, so that only on the first voice here is are we applying a wave folder. You can hear that. There. 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 And we go through there to the filter, uh, and we, 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 we split it apart, make one voice go through the wave folder, combine it again, then put it through the uh, VCF, then the VCA, uh, and we'll come back down to here in a second, and then that gets split apart yet again, and then we have a different effect, um, the delay effect on the last voice here that you're hearing, combined again, mixed down to uh, a mono signal going into the reverb because we don't need a individual, we don't need one individual reverb for every voice. We just want one for the whole collection of voices. And that saves on CPU and it also, the, the sounds, sometimes sounds can, um, the, the overall loudness uh, and frequency responses of the sounds coming into a module can affect the overall sound. So it might sound odd if every, it, it would be like you're. A, you're multi-tracking and recording one voice at a time in a room, and they might not interact with each other in the same way. So that's yet another reason that you want to uh, run things like reverbs. You want to have the voice mixed down to mono before you put it there. Of course, you could mix it down to stereo uh, in, in different ways, if that was your, your choice, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a, in a different patch, about how to make kind of like stereo voiced um, synth sounds. So, that's the frequency output, and then we're going to back up here. We have all of these LFOs uh, that are controlling the modulation input of each individual VCO so that the shape isn't always exactly the same for every voice. And they're all set to just slightly different speeds and getting combined into this combined module and sent to the modulation input there because if we just have one uh, here, then they'll all share the same shape and they'll all sound uh, similar to one another. This gives a little kind of phasing effect to everything. Uh, then we have the shift register, which we talked about. What it does is it, every time this gate is pulsed, it samples the input, and then uh, the next time it's pulsed, it takes this input and puts it there, this input puts it there, and shifts it up. And we're using this to create a round with the gate uh, that we have here, so that each individual um, voice is sounding at a time. And we, we'll, we'll play this with, with this in a second so you can see some different configurations, but essentially that's what's going on there. Uh, and the rule is with the shift register, so if you want one voice to sound at a time, you have one, and then you are sam one that is pulsing this, and then you're sampling the fourth uh, division there, so that you only ever have one on at a time. And then we're, com we're taking all of these shift register signals, uh, I mean just the first four at least, we don't need these ones up here, um, and we're combining them together into a poly signal and sending that signal to both envelopes here. One is for the filter and one is for the VCA. They just have slightly different settings to um, make the sound a little more complex, and we're sending this uh, envelope through first through an attenuator so that it doesn't go over the entire range uh, of the, I'll show you something here, the entire range of the modulation output. So that's that's going from zero to, uh, zero to one there, but after we attenuate it, it's just going there, right? 
So that's just this little right there. But if it was the whole range, it would actually go beyond this. I mean, it would clip here, and you're not really getting the sound of the envelope that's unclipped. So that always helps to have that attenuator there. All right, so that, that is the whole patch explained. Um, obviously, what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just play with it a little bit and uh, talk about what I'm doing as I'm playing with it. Tune it to a little, this is sort of chaotic, and I wanted to get it a little bit more musical uh, and useful. Now that I've explained everything, uh, we can take some time to just mess around with it. Okay. So, the first thing I want to do is experiment a little bit with this shift register. So many voices that are going at the same time that uh, if I put it in a pentatonic, it almost they'll always kind of agree with each other, no matter where they are.
voices that are kind of going together. Maybe even slower. Make these go even slower. This is like you have two notes kind of playing. But whatever that's called, it's just two uh, together in interval, I guess, together. And then you have two upper notes. I'm going to sync them all together just by turning them on and off again. Interesting, right? Oh, yeah, these ones don't have sync inputs. I forgot. Yeah, because they're small. Kid couldn't fit the sync input. Slap back with that. 
return it for you. So 
represent that it won't. And whoops, you'll see that reflected here. And the di well, actually, we can look at the difference between the two. This this will show you all of the cases that are coming in. If you see one appearing here that doesn't appear here, that means it's been skipped. Okay, like that one was skipped.
math, yeah. So both the VCO and the VCF are the things that take up the most um, CPU in the patch. And that's why, you know, I could, I could put in a analog modeling filter to this, but then it would be even more, and I want to hopefully, hopefully most of you can open this patch without um, any problems, but because it's poly, that's another thing I, you know, I didn't mention before. You can create patches in Audulous that your machine cannot run, right? And that's why you have the CPU meter there. It's, it's the same as if you load too many plugins. Like, it, it's the exact same. It's not Audulous's fault. Uh, it's just the limits of your computer. It's just you can't be processing an infinite number of things. You have to um, manage that uh, resources and manage those resources. And that's why it's important, like I said before, you know, you if you didn't care about having different um, gates going to different envelopes for each voice, if you just wanted one uh, gate going to each voice, or uh, well, one envelope going to each voice, collapse it immediately after the VCO, and you'll save a ton of CPU uh, because you won't have the rest of this patch, the filter especially, running um, at uh, four four copies of itself. So. You just need to think about okay, what needs to be in poly and what doesn't. If it doesn't need to be in poly, then collapse it to mono before it gets to that uh, area. Okay, so I think I'll leave it there for today and upload this patch um, for you guys to check out and play with yourself. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got a lot in, uh, out of this and understood really how to... This is just the beginning of how you can use poly. There's other cool things you can do with it, other cool things that I will explore in the future. Uh, especially when you're building things, it can make building things really um, convenient and easy, especially if you're trying to apply uh, one you know, process to a bunch of different signals at once. You can you know, put those in a poly and do that uh, so that it happens without having to wire up a bunch of different things. Okay, so I'll leave it there. Uh, thanks again for joining me on Wired Up with Mark, and I will see you